I'm Mark Allen, Mr. Saltwater Tank, coming to you on behalf of saltwaterquarium.com. It's Monday night, evening. For some of you on the left coast, it's just the afternoon. Wherever you are, thanks for being with us. I'm going to pause for a minute, let some people jump into the stream, and feed the fish because everybody loves it when I feed the fish. A lot of you ask what I feed my fish. Looks like this. In the morning they get nori, half of a sheet. This is a what eight by eight ish sheet. The fish get half of this, and in the afternoon they get frozen food, LRS, uh, Herbert Foro Frenzy, or Reef Frenzy is what I feed. And then sometimes in the late afternoon, early evening, I'll throw them some more algae or I'll throw in some pellets. For now, uh, you guys can take bets on how long it's going to take for this. Uh, to get destroyed. Hey look, the usuals are showing up. Steven, goalie mask from Design at Will. I, I gotta hear goalie mask from Design at Will. What is the background uh, on your username? Put in the comments, I'm gonna feed the fish. There you go. All right, so I asked Goalie Mask from Design and Will, how do you come up with the username? And he says, I paint ho hockey masks for fun, so my son renamed my page. Goalie, I would love to see some of the designs uh, that you've done. Love hockey, fantastic sport, unfortunately. The National Predators were knocked down in the first round by the Carolina Hurricanes. Um, but you know what? Um, that's the life, right? That's the life of the playoffs. You're going to get beat, then you're out. So we'd love to see what you do, Goalie Mass. Send me some of those sales at saltwaterquarium.com. We'd love to see uh, what kind of work that you do. Isabel says, thanks for the uh, first time here. Isabel, thanks for being a first time uh, watcher. Uh, ask some questions live absolutely put them in the comments this is a Q&A session fire away I'll answer as many of those as I can uh, in the next 30 minutes or, or so so thanks Nelson for the comments on the tanks uh, Nelson says I have an amazing aquarium thank you it's coming along uh, you know at this stage you feel like it's never where you want it to be I've got some sizable corals in here I've got some good growth going on even with my SPS but you know, it's never enough. And then you get to the fun phase when it's kind of the bonsai phase, as I call it, where you're trimming things, things aren't touching one another. It's not overgrown, it doesn't look weedy. And then you move into the weedy phase when you're kind of like, ah, I think I just want to cut all that out and I'm kind of tired of this one. If I move this over there, then I can get this new coral. And then it's a whole different ball of wax. Not a complaint, just different phase uh, of the aquarium. All right, KP Diver, as in Scuba Diver, uh, my opinion, would have been able to get by with two skies on a 70, 36, 25 mixed reef. 72. All right, so probably KT Diver, depending on what kind of corals that you want to keep. I mean, 70 is pushing it in terms of the outer edges. Um, the 36 width is okay. So here's the thing. What I would do is at least, you're going to need at least two. So put two on there. If you feel like it's still too dark um, or you're getting some shadowing in the center, which you may also have, especially if you have a brace down the center of that 70 inch long tank, then go for three, but start with two because when you first start out your tank, you don't have to have every bit of gear that you're ever gonna own. I see a lot of people make this mistake. They never start their tank until they have everything that they need or everything planned out perfectly. Like just get the tank started. Get the tank going on its life cycle Get it out of the gate. You can always add another light. You can add another pump. Heck, if you don't even have internal circulation pumps at first, who cares? 
get it going, get his life started, get that maturity going on, and then you can add in two, the other light. If you got two lights, add a third. If you have one, then you can add a second, or then you can add some more powerful or different, like DC type pumps, like your Suchet Streams. I uh, have one of those right here. There you go, Suchet X Streams. Like, look, if you can just afford one to start, fine. Do that, get your tank started. Drives me crazy when people are like, I gotta have all the gear before I even start my tank. Like, no, just start the tank. All right, so start with 2KP, see what you get. Uh, you can always add another one or two. Neptune Systems would appreciate your patronage. Of course, the only place you really wanna buy them is uh, saltwateraquarium.com, shop there. We have pre-orders, the sky's on pre-orders. Um, don't know the ship date. I don't know if there is an official ship date yet, but hey, put your pre-order in now. When they're in stock, we'll fire those things off. Great question, Boston Bruins fans. Okay, so David, I gotta talk some smack here for a minute. Um, the one time the National Predators went to the NHL Stanley Cup Finals, they got beat by the Bruins. Now, let's paraphrase this, let's back up. I was born in Boston. Born in Boston, out there in Wellesley. So look, I understand. I'm, you know, Boston's the hometown teams: Boston Bruins, Boston Celtics. Grew up with Larry Bird, but the Bruins beat the Predators, man. In like Game Seven, it was like so heartbreaking. I understand the best team wins. I know that's how it goes in life. There's no participation trophies, but yeah, I mean, the Bruins are a great team. It's not like I'm a hockey nut, but look, I I give them that. Um, and they're the hometown team as well. Just, you know, a sore spot. Would love to see the Predators do it again because Nashville went berserko. It was crazy. It was hilarious to see Nashville, Tennessee, which everyone, not everyone, but a lot of people think is kind of Redneckville, go nutso uh, for hockey. So it'd be great to see that again. Maybe uh, the Boston Bruins will get it done this year. All right. Katie wants to know, what pump would I recommend for a quarter horsepower JBJ Chiller? All right, Katie. So... I would check the specs from JBJ. I'm not exactly sure what that chiller needs in terms of gallons per hour for flow. You might need something more sizable, like a, I hate to say Mag 7, because those things kick out a lot of heat. Something like a Vectra S2, maybe an uh, M2. You might not need an L1 or an L2 to get that job done. Check and see what the flow rates are, and then find a pump that's compatible. You gotta keep in mind head loss, but you're probably not gonna have a lot of vertical head pressure to deal with driving the chiller because it's probably going to sit next to the tank so check the flow rates can't comment exactly because i don't know uh the exact specs on that model all right here we go fun phosphate questions i got questions about phosphates a lot from clients and tank buddies marcus fessler wants to know have you ever heard of adding light to a small tank uh in to increase phosphates so i miss Marcus, are you saying uh, adding light to a small tank to increase phosphates? Seems like more light, more algae, more snails consuming it and pooping. Um, so if that's what you're asking, light to increase phosphates, I don't see the correlation there. Adding lights to a tank isn't going to increase phosphates. Two different things. If you clarify that one, Marcus, I'll see if I can catch you in the comments uh, and come back to it. All right. So black cryptic, black dash cryptic. Why with the uh, rainbow avatar? I love that. Why would Zoa heads turn brown? Great question. In my experience, black dash cryptic, a lot of times they turn brown because they're not getting enough light. Even though they're a soft coral, a lot of people think they don't need a lot of light, but if they don't get enough, then they can turn brown. Keep in mind, some Zoas are brown. They're just, that's the prettiest thing in the world. They're straight brown. So you may have gotten the not so pretty brown variety. Check that first. Sounds like if they're turning brown, they were some color, and now they're going to brown. It might be that they need more light. So you can change your light by moving them higher in your tank. If they're off to the side from underneath the light, move it right directly underneath the light, or add more lights to your tank. Always to get the new light, see what you get with that. Keep in mind, coloring up coral takes a lot of time. So don't expect if you move it to the light, two days later, all of a sudden they're gonna be back to green or whatever color they were before. It could take up to a month or more to get those zoas to color back up. All right. Oh, always get this question. Reggie wants to know, replacing all the rock with new cornerstone reef rock, you got bio bricks in your sump, would it change it all at once? 
the old rock was giving you too much issues. Current, curious on what issues the rock was giving you. No, I would not change it all at once, even though you have those bio bricks in your sump. The bacteria that grows in and on your rocks is a terrestrial bacteria. It doesn't float around very much in the water column. So you put some of the new rock in, you take some of the old rock out, put some of the new rock in, and that bacteria, for lack of a better term, is gonna crawl over to that new rock and then seed it. Don't take it all at once. You could cause a mini cycle in your tank and cause issues. Do it piece by piece. Now, here's a tip with this. Let's say some of your rock has nuisance algae or nuisance corals that you don't want on it. Move that rock to the side, get it out of your tank first. You don't wanna take it all out at once though. One of the few reasons I would replace rock in a tank, there is a coral that I couldn't get off of there. Then I would look at replacing rock. Most of the time though, the rock that goes in the tank stays and I leave it, I don't fiddle with it. Once you go down the rabbit hole of re-aquascaping your tank, you move one thing, it's never gonna go back how it was and you're like, I can move this and then I could move that. But then that gives me that idea over here and you're there forever. So do a little bit of a time, Reggie. Good luck with that. John wants to know how many fish are in my tank? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm kidding. I'm not going to take the time to count them all. Someone asked me that on a live stream a while ago. We had a contest with that. Uh, I think the answer back then was, was 48. Um, I've probably added another 40 or more since then. So maybe I'm pushing 100 now. I don't know but it's a lot and it still doesn't feel that full. Ha! <laughs> Russ, come on, buddy. Russ says, I need to stop watching your channel and getting so jealous of that large, beautiful tank. My 220 felt better, uh, but I'm done with the 110. Down to a 110 limited room. All right, so look. Some of you would love to have a 1,000-gallon reef tank. Can't deny that 10 years ago when I first started Mr. Saltwater Tank TV and had a 90-gallon tank, it was like a thousand gallons wasn't even like in my realm of possibility like that. There's no way I'd have room for it. That wouldn't happen. Wasn't even out there. So like 220 was like, wow, if I could get to a 220, that'd be amazing. Then I got a 225 and then it was a 375 and then a 450. Point is, whatever tank size you have, even it's if it's a 10 gallon water box cube like I have over there, Look, enjoy what you got. It's always easy to want something bigger, want something more. Bigger tanks have their challenges. Smaller tanks have challenges. Enjoy what you got. Be happy that you at least be able to have a tank. Get in the hobby. There's lots of people that would love to have a tank, and uh, they can't for whatever reason. So, Russ, thanks you for the uh, kind words about the tank. I certainly enjoy watching it, too. would love to be home no more to enjoy it more. But um, for now... You know, I enjoy it when I'm home and certainly don't feel like I would want a smaller tank. Nothing wrong with small tanks, but I enjoy what I have. All right. A question from the lady reefer here. Sarah, any suggestions on a storm clown that's in with a black clown? So the storm has been jailed for days, multiple times, and still is a complete jerk. He's bullying the black clown where the black is covering in the rocks and won't come out. Um, so won't come out because the white one is a bit bigger than the black. Okay, so a couple things around this, Sarah. Number one, they may be different species of clowns. Usually different species of clowns don't meld together really well. Also, when you put them in the tank could have something to do with it. One trick you could do, since you're good at catching this black clown, pull the black clown out, then pull the white clown out, put the white clown in first, and then put some other fish in with the black clown. The other thing you can do, which I really like, and I don't have one up here now, is get an acclimation box. We have them at saltwateraquarium.com. You can put the white clown in the tank, put the black clown in the acclimation box. See what happens. Does a black clown go berserko trying to get out of the box and go after the white clown? If so, maybe that that black clown just isn't gonna work in your tank, it's time for it to go. The other thing you can do, a lot of the acclimation boxes, like the ones we sell at saltwaterquarium.com, have a divider in them. So you can take both clowns out of the tank, put them on either side of the divider, that way they can't get to one another, and then see what happens. You can leave them there for a while. I've had fish in there for a week at a time, 
getting them used to one another. I did this with the two gold rim Achilles hybrid. It's there's one right. Oh, this is difficult backwards there, and the other one's right there. So this guy <laughs> here went in the acclimation box because the bigger one was already in the tank. For three days, the larger Achilles gold rim hybrid was trying to annihilate the smaller one through the box. Over After two more days, five days total in the box, they both chilled out and now they get along. So acclimation box is a great way to see what's going to happen with the fish and see if they'll tolerate each other. Put them both in the box, put the divider in there, and then leave it be. Make sure they don't get to one another. See if they chill out after a couple days. Maybe uh, the black clown will decide it's worth it to chill and uh, go from there. All right, Kevin, if I have a friend who has cyanide on their tank, gives you some frags, what do I need to do to prevent the cyanide from getting in your tank? Okay, easiest thing to do is to dip and wash down the frags. Now, cyano is a bacteria, so some of it's microscopic. You're not necessarily going to be able to see it on the frag, but if you do, you can blast it off of there. And dipping will do a little something for you to help clean up the coral as well. I'm not saying it prevents cyano, but you always want to dip your coral before they go into your tank. Anyway, dipping it certainly isn't going to hurt when it comes to cyano. So if you're really concerned, Kevin, dip the thing, swish it in the dip. You can then get another cup of salt water from your tank, put it in there, swish it some more, and then put it into your tank. I would not expect your tank to all of a sudden have a cyano outbreak because you brought in a frag that had a little bit on it. You shouldn't, if it has enough that you can see it, you can blast that off. The stuff is, isn't very sticky. It comes right off, but it's not like you're gonna seed your tank with cyano because you put a frag in there. It's likely the cyano is already in your tank, but it's just kept at bay in the natural balance of things. Certainly it's not gonna hurt you um, to be uh, cautious with that, but I'm not real concerned about cyano coming in on a frag. All right, ooh, Brad, worst nightmare here. Brad Dot Hobbies, I have my first reef tank, 75 gallons, nice size. That was my first reef tank size. Correction, my first saltwater tank size. Back then, we didn't have reef tanks because no one could keep coral. Broke a seal on the bottom and I replaced the tank. Is there anything I should do preemptively to give your corals the best chance? All right, Brad, a couple thoughts here. One, you replace the tank. I'm wondering if you put everything from one tank into the other. If you haven't, Doing it slowly is going to help. I found one of the best things that I do for my tank and my client's tank is take it slow. Now, I'm not saying don't add corals for six months. Some people suggest that. I'm not a fan of that. I'm actually a fan of adding corals very early on because they bring in bacteria that we can't necessarily propagate or buy in a bottle. Just natural stuff that's on those LPS skeletons, even some SPS, bring them in and get to that biodiversity going in your tank. Uh, those are things that I would like to do, Brad. Taking it slow isn't going to hurt. That's hilarious. Philip, nice comment here. Been watching you for a really long time. Thanks, Philip. Thanks for watching. Thanks for making the transition over here to SoWaterCurrent.com as well. Um, found my channel years ago when I did a video on the SWC 160 skimmer. You still have it in your closet? Did you not use it? Did you have a tank and you broke it down? I'm curious about the background on that, Philip. Certainly remember that video. Um, that was a good skimmer. Too bad that company didn't work out. I think it had a little bit of something to do with the owner smuggling seahorses, but I uh, can't remember that. All right, KP, back to the sky question from the top of the show. As a Kessel 700, you could add to the middle. He was asking about, is two skylights enough for a 70 inch long tank? To which I replied, Start with two, you're probably going to want to end up with three depending on bracing, but get the tank started with at least two, see what you get. Adding the AP700 in the center isn't going to hurt anything. It's not like it's going to make or break your tank because you do it and it may give you that even light that you like. Now, thought with this KP is I like having consistent light across the tank. Years ago, I tried different types of lighting in different sections of my tank and the blues never matched up, the whites never matched up. It looked like Neapolitan ice cream, which I wasn't into. So the AP700 light is going to look different than the skylight. And you may find that you'd rather just have uniform light um, and therefore you want to go all skies. Nothing wrong with AP700. It's just one of those picky things. You'd like to have it all look the same. 
So you may end up wanting one type of light, or you may want to go all AP700s. Uh, either way is can be will work is right. Just keep an eye out for that different looks of light that uh, may not be your thing. Thanks. Oh, look at this. Here you go, Barbara with the, with the eye here. The aquarium is breathtaking. Thank you, Barbara. Fish are great, but I haven't seen a blue tang. No blue tangs for me. Not going to do it. Don't like the hippo tangs. As they get bigger, they get to be jerks. And a lot of times I found them to eat zoanthids. I like zoanthids. I have a zoa garden uh, that's getting going over there. Reminding me I need to buy some zoas. If any of you frag and sell zoas, let me know. I'm in the market for some. So no hippo tangs. I get it. It's an iconic fish, but not for me. I have enough tangs in the tank. This tank is going to be more about uh, antheus and wrasses. Uh, as opposed to tanks. I got enough. I have my blonde naso, my two Achilles Skullroom hybrids, uh, my Dusimer tang, the little gem tang. She's tiny. She's like, how big is Jimmy now? Inch and a half max. Uh, and that's it. Yeah, that's it for tangs. I'm good with that. Thanks, Barbara. No blue tangs for me. Let's see here. Mm hmm. Yep. Oh, Dave with the nano tank questions. Those of you that are in the nano tanks, we have a nano tank series over at saltwateraquarium.com on our YouTube channel and on our website. So if you're thinking about a nano tank, check out the nano tank series. David wants to know my thoughts on a tail spot blenny for a 20 gallon nano with two oscillaris clowns and some coral. Great nano fish, Dave. Tail spot, tail spot. Tail spot blenny would be fine for that tank. Good choice. Just keep in mind you may need some kind of lid. They can jump. Few things are bummer, as much as of a bummer as finding crispy fish on your floor. So I'd add it, think about it, some kind of netting or grating for the top of the tank. Or glass top, as my friend uh, Jerry over at Planet Aquariums, GT Jerry, glass tops Jerry likes. Keep those fish in there. Oh, look at this. Steven, Steven, the consistent viewer. Thanks for being with us again, Steven. Stephen wants to know the Personatus angels uh, that I put in a tank uh, a while ago, about three weeks now, two weeks now, go to a public or private aquarium. So we just had an Interruptus, nice fish. Uh, so Stephen, that went to a private tank. We have four of them. We actually had four, one male. Actually, we started with four females. Now we have two males. Two females were seen if they're pairing up. Those of you that are into social media, keep an eye on my Instagram and Facebook page tomorrow. I'm moving some fish across the country in private plane again. Uh, this is, what do we have? Some deep water antheus, some wrought iron butterflies, uh, some banded angels, all kinds of fun stuff. So keep an eye out for that. Um, time to jump on the private plane and move some fish around. Okay, Dave. I know Dave. I grew up in Boston, Bruins. I know, I get it, but I'm in Nashville now. Predators are the hometown team. Uh, maybe we'll get further than the playoffs uh, in the first round of the playoffs at some point. All right, Steve wants to know. Steve firing back. Whoever does phytoplankton on any builds, you're adding 200 milliliters per day. You're seeing a lot more sponge tunics with growth. All right, Steve. So what about adding phytoplankton? Some of you are asking, why would what is it? Why would you do that? Phytoplankton is plankton. It looks like green, like a green smoothie kind of. You put in your tank to feed corals and feed other stuff in your tank. Steven, I've never done it because I don't see the benefit of doing it. Sorry, I'm just noticing this blenny, striped blenny digging in the sand. Is it going to hurt anything? Probably not, considering most of my tanks are nutrient poor. Adding it's not going to cause a problem. I don't recommend it for most people because most people have hair algae problems or cyano problems. So pumping in more nutrients in your tank uh, it's not a good idea. So, Stephen, if your tank is lower nutrients, you're not seeing any detriment from doing it, it's not going to hurt. You're seeing a lot more sponge and tunica growth. I love sponges in saltwater tanks, which reminds me I need to take some uh, to my client tomorrow, put some of them in their tank to get them seeded off. Thanks, Stephen. I'm adding that to my to-do list right now uh, because I will forget. If it's not on a list, I forgot. Take a pause a minute. I'm going to write that down. You all can stare at the tank.
Thanks, Stevie. Oh. The boss is asking, who's coming to Aquashell next week in Orlando? Me. I'm coming. I get to go from the Midwest straight to Orlando. And I'm giving a talk on Saturday afternoon at, I believe, 3, 3 or 3.30. Uh, so don't catch, don't catch. Do catch that. Don't miss that. Aquashella, Orlando happening this weekend, uh, June. I'm going to check it because I'll, apparently, there you go. Uh, June 12th and 13th in Orlando, Florida. That's right, Nelson. You're only 30 minutes. You have no excuse not to be there. Anyone who's, look, northern Florida, any part of Florida, southern Georgia, Alabama, get your tail over there. Orlando, Aquashella, Orlando, it's happening. Um, be there, especially if you're anywhere in Florida. Or if you want to get away, come to Florida, go to Aquashella, and you can take your kids to Universal Studios Orlando, or you can just come alone and spend all the time you want looking at corals without your kids going, oh my gosh, I want to leave, and your wife going, this is so boring. Or if you're a lady reefer, your husband's sitting there going, this is so boring. That's all right. They don't have to get it. It's your hobby, not theirs. All right. Let's see here. Huh. Hate cords. Ah. I know, Steve. Ah. Chanel wants to know, do I dose my tank with additives? If so, what do you dose? Your tank is awesome. Thanks. Thanks, Chanel. I don't dose anything in this tank. I have a calcium reactor running. So that's not necessarily dosing. I'm not dosing anything else on this tank. Just letting it go. Very minimalist type of approach. And it works well on my tank and my client's tanks now. Thanks for the reminder, Chanel. I might be adding some amino acids. Reminds me, I gotta see if I have some. I might start adding that in to see if I get a little color out of the SPS. Tank doesn't necessarily need it, but if I've got it, might as well give it a whirl. Other than that, I don't go nutso with bottles of stuff. I made that mistake when I was young into reefing. I'd see all those pretty bottles and I'm like, I want this one, and that looks pretty, I'll take that one. And that one looks cool too. It's great marketing, nothing wrong with it. However, I found that the more I chase things like that, the more issues I had in the tank, the less I messed with the tank, the more I just let it ride, uh, the better that it did. All right, great question. Let me see. We got time for one more. Ah, ooh, hmm. Here we go. Here's the board reefer question. Any recommendations for getting your tank, your spark back with reef tanks? I'm glad you put the context to that for reef tanks. Some sparks I can't help. I've had a reef for over 15 years and you catch yourself not being as involved or interested as I once was. 15 years is a great run on a reef, David. You should be proud of yourself for that. That's fantastic. We'd we'll love to see pictures of your tank. Hopefully you took a before and a now type picture so I can see the growth. So I did a, a Mr. Saltwater Tank React show about this a while ago. What do you do when you're bored with your tank? Because everyone gets there. Whether you're frustrated and then you don't want to hang out with it or it's going so well you get bored and clients actually quit because they called me and said, it's too easy, take it away. That was a nuts phone call. So what do you do, David, if you're bored? Lots of things you can do. Hack back your tank. Mow the thing down. Give corals away, trade them in for credit, sell them to your local fish store. Heck, if you got anything cool, let's talk. I may want it for my tank. Happy to pay for that kind of stuff. Change things up. Mow some corals down. Maybe you take some rocks out and put some new rocks in so that it's a blank slate. You can add some new corals in there. Um, change their approach to the tank. Maybe you're all into coral and not so much fish. Now you can go more into fish. Maybe it's adding a different approach to your tank. Maybe you've done a lot of additives, now you want to start taking them out one by one and see what, see how the tank reacts. These are all things that you can fiddle with to make your tank interesting again, because I get it. It gets to a point where you're like, you don't have to do anything to it. You just kind of push it along a little bit and it does its thing and you're happy. Check that show out, David, as well. Uh, I'll have us add that uh, link in the comments uh, for that Mr. Saltwater Tank React show. I had more, que more questions, more answers, more ideas in there uh, for what to do um, about what do you do when uh, your tank when you get bored with your tank it's a good thing we're not like in a lecture room David because people may be like throwing stuff at you they're like how can you be bored with your tank can't even get mine going 
Everyone has their own challenges with the tank. Being born with it isn't a bad one to have. Again, I would love to see pictures of the before and after when you started it 15 years ago to where it is now. Hear about the progression. Uh, hit us up, sales at saltwateraquarium.com. We'd love to hear more about it, David. And with that, I'm going to sign off uh, for the evening. Keep in mind, if you're on social media, you want to watch me move some fish around the country via private plane, I'll be doing that tomorrow, Tuesday. i got to do some flying. Um, and then I'll be in Aquashella this weekend, Aquashella, Orlando, in Orlando, Florida, on June 12th, giving a talk Saturday afternoon, I believe it's 3 or 3.30. Uh, we'll, put, we'll post that. Make sure you check that out. If you're anywhere in Florida or the South, get your tail to Orlando, uh, to Aquashella, and I will catch everyone next Monday. We'll be back at the same time. Have a great rest of your week. Enjoy your tanks. And make sure you stop by our booth at uh, Aquashella if you're coming. Say hi. We'd love to hear about you, hear about your tanks, answer any questions that you have. Have a great